going today, guys. So we are here in the Manitou Springs, and we're going to Cave of the Winds today. And uh, yeah, we're going to take a little tour of Cave of the Winds and see kind of how it goes. I think we did did it once, but it wasn't a very good video. But uh, yeah, so we're going to try get do a better video today. So other than that, let's uh, let's get on the tour and see how it goes. Now, 50 million years later, when all that limestone was pushed up by tectonic activity in the area, the place shifted, pushed up that limestone into our rocky mountains. Now, these mountains, like most mountains, had quite a few little cracks, crevices, nooks and crannies, things like those in them. So the water from the Ordovician Sea, needing somewhere to go, would become seeded in those little crevices. Now, at this point, it's important to note that that Ordovician Sea water had a very important chemical inside of it, called carbonic acid. Now, carbonic acid would form when gastropods, plants, really any life at the bottom of the Ordovician Sea would die and decompose. Now, all life on Earth has always been carbon-based, so when that decomposition happened, that carbon would become infused with the water, creating carbonic acid. Now, you guys might actually be more familiar with carbonic acid than you think, because nowadays we find it in things like soda and sparkling water, anything with carbonation. But if used with that acid, the water would seep in the little nooks and crannies of the mountain face, and that acid would eat away at huge chunks of limestone over thousands and thousands of years. After enough time, it ultimately ate away at enough of it to enlarge to become Cave of the Winds after about 7 million years. Now, when we go in, we're going to be looking at quite a few formations, and those are the result of their own process called mineral depository, which involves water seeping up mineral from the outside of the mountain face, the ground, really anywhere else in the landscape before flowing into the existing cave. When it does flow in, it leaves behind those minerals on top of existing swaths of limestone. And over thousands of years, just like that acid road of the cave, those it does kind of actually feel good. <laughs> Thank you. 
that new wall, so we'll go against that railing. So we're going to be talking about those columns right down there. And Scientifically known as Botrya, of course, its appearance, but also how it grows. It forms from tight little cracks in the rock shelf behind it, actually allow bubbles to grow out of them. And as the bubbles grow and burst, as bubbles do, they leave behind mineral deposits in that shape. Thus, we get that sort of collection of orb-shaped minerals, reminiscent of popcorn, thus the name. However, this room itself is called Guy's Rest. And it gets that name from that eight and a half hour crawling tour. It's a great room to mention it, I find, because you can see the original floor line exceptionally well. It's right here, and it goes all the way along the side of the room. It's right over here. This big shelf of sort of rock right here is where the floor used to sit. And when you look at it in comparison to the ceiling, you might think, we're in that lot of room. However, this was actually the biggest room in the tour by a mile. In fact, it was the only room you were able to sit up in. And after crawling for about four hours, it was a very pleasant surprise to be able to sit up and have your lunch, really, do anything but look at the booth in front of you, as you had been for quite some time. And right after that, you could do it again on your way back. So it was a very well-cherished room among guys and guests alike. However, the question posed in that statement is how that floor line is lowered what we're standing on right now. And that's the technique called cave pushing, which involves a group of people coming down here into the cave and very literally pushing all of the loose dirt, blocks, rubble, whatever else fell up this floor line to one end of the cave. And that is exactly what this is. This big wall of rocks is what used to be the floor, and it has since been shrugged into 15 meters of dead end. Now, that's really good for us, because we can enjoy walking past it instead of crawling on it. We can also no longer get lost in what used to be back there, which was, as I mentioned, the dead end. And finally, you guys can touch this. In fact, this is the only thing in the game you guys are going to be allowed to touch today, and that's because it's not really part of the cave at all. It is very literally rocks and dirt. It's rubble. But if you guys are really dying to touch something today, I would much rather you do it here rather than anywhere else in the cave. Otherwise, though, we are going to wait a little bit on the screen in front of us, going down that staircase down there. So in the meantime, I am going to show you guys one extra formation in this room. It's right over here. And I could point it out with my flashlight, but that would sort of take away the appeal. Because it has a bright red glow. I'm just kidding, we have Latin issues. But the rock itself is actually red because it has a deposit of iron oxide in it. Iron oxide, better known as rust, of course, just like it turns the surface of Mars, turning an old wet piece of metal red, and turns that piece of glowstone red. It's glowstone, just like we saw in that first room of the cave. Because of that red color, as well as the vascular look to it, said to be reminiscent of veins or arteries, which you can see if you go up and look through that hole. And you do have the time, so feel free to if you'd rather. But those two things in tandem give it the name Giant's Cave Park. So if you want to go take a look at that, feel free to get your cave touching out on this wall. Alright, so as... Now, that is unfortunately also why we have to have the meta 
because Spurs have a history of getting a little handy with the formations, and these ones are very good at defending themselves. You want to touch them again? That ladder is actually very close to a point the boys got to, and they stopped there because they were met with another gust of wind, much stronger this time. This time it blew out on the wall, back down there, all over their formation to see. But of all of them, George Snyder decided to move up. All right, so that is the end of the tour, and uh, yeah, we're just gonna chill in the gift shop for a little bit, and uh, yeah, don't forget to like, comment, follow, and subscribe, and see you guys in the next video.